What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here. And in this video, we're gonna be completing our role uh, mechanic. Uh, we already imported our role animation and created an animation montage in the last video and uh, set up a taunt. So in this one, we're gonna go ahead and create a role mechanic that works sort of like a dodge in uh, Dark Souls. Now, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you are not subscribed. And that's a pretty bad number. So if you like this one, be sure to click on that sub or thanks button below. Speaking of thanks, huge shout out to Miss Mo Davis and Time of the Psychic. Thank you so much for being channel members. If you wanna support the channel and get shout outs in videos like this, click on that join button below. All right, so on to the video itself. Let's go ahead and uh, open up our third person blueprints folder and open up our third person character we've created a taunt uh, key here for t but we want to do it the right way using the enhanced input system uh in religion 5 we've moved to a new enhanced input system we have a context menu here and we have a actions menu here we've already created our crouch mechanics so let's create one for taunt so let's go to input input action and type IA underscore taunt. And let's also create one for dodge. So let's hit input action and type IA underscore dodge. Now in our input mapping context file, we're gonna go ahead and add those two mappings. So we'll add two new mappings. So the first one will be taunt and we're gonna use the shift key. Again, we can press the select value key and then press the shift key on our keyboard and it will automatically define it. Or we can actually click on the search box here, or the drop down menu and find a keyboard key specifically. Uh, actually, we don't want left shift for this one. This is taunt, so we want T. So I'll make that T. Now we're gonna create another input mapping, and this time it's going to be the dodge. And this is the one that's going to be, let's say E. Now we can use input action taunt and connect it here. And now if we test the game and press T, we taunt just like we did before. Perfect. Now let's create one for the dodge. Let's right click and type dodge and choose input action dodge. Now we're gonna do the same thing here, but we are gonna add a bit more logic uh, pretty soon to this. So let's connect this here, switch to our dodge or roll here, hit compile and let's just see what it looks like. Now if I hit play, I can walk forward and press E and we get a nice little roll here. However, there is an issue if I were to go ahead and expand this here and hit play, when I run over here and try to roll under it, I actually can't get under that block. That's because our collision shape, as you can see, we never made it invisible, is too large even though the mesh itself isn't. So how can we fix this? Well, first I'm gonna make this a little bit more raised just because I think realistically that might be a little too low to dodge under and let's try this so if i run and dodge we can't get under and uh, let's go and fix that let's open up our third person character and right when we use our input action we're going to type crouch and this is going to make the player crouch and then play the animation and now if we hit play and we run over here and try to roll we have rolled into a crouch and we can obviously get underneath this now. However, the character never quite stands up. So we need to find out how long it takes to play this animation and add a delay. Let's say it takes one second because I actually think that is about how long it takes. And then we'll type uncrouch and let's hit compile and test this out. Yep, now I could roll underneath and then he uncrouches and I continue running. And the speed also slows down. And you can dodge to the left, you can dodge to the right, all the directions work. All right, so what we're essentially doing is when we press dodge, the character movement controller crouches down to make the character smaller, then it plays the animation sprint forward, delays for one second the length of the animation, and then it uncrouches. So if we go ahead and test this out, we can run and roll underneath objects. And we can even, uh, if we roll underneath something and we are stuck underneath it, the character stays crouched. Great. Now we don't want this to happen if we're not moving, kind of the opposite of our other animation montage where we only want it happening if we're moving. We also don't want it to happen if we're jumping. So for example, if I jump and press E, it's kind of a weird thing, though maybe you, you would want to enable that. That's totally up to you. It might look like you're kind of like landing appropriately. But uh, in this case, we don't want to be able to dodge if we're not 
touching the ground. So now we want to see if the character is moving or not before we actually start any of this process. So let's drag off of this and create a branch. And we'll say if this branch is true, then we can continue on. Uh, but for now, we need to actually tell it what to check. And what we want to check is our character movement. So we'll drag that into the event graph. And we want to choose get velocity. And this is going to get the speed of our character movement component. Then we want to actually pull off of this and choose vector length. And we're going to check if this is greater than zero and connect to our condition. So that way we're not actually checking if the velocity is a positive or negative because we could be moving forward or backwards or left or right. And those are negative and positive axes. So we're actually checking the length. If the length of whatever direction we're going is longer than zero, then we're moving. Uh, so that's kind of a nice little trick we can use there. Uh, let's go ahead and check this out and see if it works. So if I press E, nothing is happening. And if I move and press E, then we roll and crouch underneath objects. And again, we can crouch and stay underneath here. All right, so now that we have that branch, the dodge only works if we're moving. Similarly, we want to stop it from happening if we're in the air. So let's go ahead and create some more space here. Let's move this to the right and I'm going to create another branch. This time we're going to drag the character movement component in, drag off of that and type is falling and we'll drag into our branch. And this time, instead of it being true, we actually want to break this and connect false because we want it only to run if we're not falling. Let's go ahead and make sure that that works. So I press E, I can't do it. If I jump and press E, I can't. But if I move forward and press E, I can. Great. It might also be a good idea to add this branch. So let's copy it to our taunt action as well. Because right now, if we hit play and jump and taunt, we can actually still jump and it looks kind of funny. So we're going to make this a branch and we're going to connect false here. And this is going to say if we're not falling, then we can use a taunt. So I'm going to press T and then we're going to jump and press T and I can't use it. But... I can still use it first and then jump. <laughs> so let's go ahead and tackle that one. It's really easy. All we have to do is drag off of jump and type stop anim montage. And we're just going to choose our taunt anim montage and hit compile. We can also do that for our roll. We can copy this and paste this here and say stop the roll as well. Let's test this. So if I roll and then jump, it stops. It stops. Nice. And if I taunt and then jump, he stops taunting and just plays the jump animation. Now, what if we don't want to have an anim montage stop for every single type of animation montage we use? Well, there's a really uh, simple way we can fix that. All we have to do is create a variable that stores which anim montage is playing. So let's right click on this and choose promote to variable and hit compile. Now we have a anim montage variable that's set to the standing taunt battle cry montage. And that plays when the taunt is run. Now what we want to do is set this animation. So we're going to drag anim montage here and choose set. And then connect this to the false and play animation montage. Then we're going to go ahead and set anim montage to the taunt. Now, what this is going to do is when we press taunt, we're going to store the type of animation we want to use into a variable and then play that specific variable. Now we're going to do the same thing for our dodge. So right where the anim montage is played, let's make some space here. Let's drag anim montage and choose set. We're going to choose the roll anim montage here. And then we're going to go ahead and drag anim montage and choose get and set that here. So again, we're just setting the variable to the one we want to use and then playing that variable. Why is this useful, you might ask? Well, if we go back up, now we only need one stop anim montage for no matter how many animations we have. So if I go ahead and drag anim montage here and choose get, it will get whatever anim montage was here the last time we used it. So you can see if I roll and jump, it stops that from happening. But if I taunt and jump, it stops that from happening. It always remembers exactly which anim montage is being used 
because we set it before we play it. Now, on our move input action, we actually don't want to set the anim here because when we're moving, we do want to play the other anim montage. So instead of using the variable, we can still specify directly which one we want to use. So let's compile and save and let's test everything out. So what do we have so far? We can crouch, we can walk, we can run, we can dodge or roll, we can dodge in different directions, and we can uh, jump or dodge under objects, which supports uh, getting stuck underneath them and staying in a crouched state until we get out, and we can launch objects. Great, so that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Specifically, if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see me create in this uh, tutorial series, please let me know and I'll uh, get working on it. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Mike the tech, Mike the tech, uh, Mike the tech, the architect, uh, Mike the tech, Mike the tech, yeah, Mike the tech, the architect.